we hear a lot of the times when we have, when we're talking to customers or I, when I'm talking to people in the field, it can be a, a hybrid approach that they have or even their safety program, that their existing digital safety platform isn't able to pull everything together. It still feels fragmented. They're working in a software in some areas, they're working out of the software in another area or they have multiple software that are not communicating and they're having trouble managing it. It's again, you're treading water four feet underwater. And so I wanna bring somebody into the next stage of this conversation, somebody that has talked to hundreds and hundreds of customers and experienced even more than I have now with the construction industry around some of these pains that they have and how they and, and how he's helped them find the right solution. And, and I know you're talking to all Salus staff here, but reality is the approach we take is really helping those companies find the right solution for them, whatever it may be. And that's something that Greg's done very well. And come on, Greg, come, come talk to the team. Yeah, thanks, Gabe. Glad to be here. And uh, yeah, I mean, as Gabe said, I'm sales manager here at Salus. And so, yeah, I do have the opportunity every day to talk with hundreds and hundreds of safety professionals that are looking to take that leap, right? They've already surpassed that stage one that you were just talking about. And so they know they want to fix something and, and to you know find a, a better solution out there. I think, you know, Gabe, one of the challenges that, that you see happening all the time is, you know, as they're going about this investigation, this journey of trying to find the right solution, they get hung up on this idea of perfection, mm. right? Ultimately, can't you just find something that's better than the status quo? And, mm -hmm. and how can you solve those existing pains for the field and, and for safety? You know, I, I think about this story just after I first started at Salus and we were talking with the general contractor based out in Ontario in the GTA. And uh, we were talking about, they'd actually gone digital for their superintendents, but their subcontractors uh, they were still collecting paper from them. And uh, I remember the safety professional we were speaking with, he kind of pushed back and said, you know, Gabe, I, there's still probably 30 to 40% of our subs that are a problem in terms of getting paper. Right. I don't think having a digital solution is gonna make that better. And he said, well, what you flipped it around, right? What about the other 50, 60%? Would that not still be a win in your mind? Just constantly improving and, and uh, evolving. Yeah, that's, that's interesting, Greg. I think, I think that's, that's a good point you bring up. I, I, I hear that a lot, and I know we have the slide here that, that perfection simply doesn't exist. Um, but it, it's interesting that you say that because um, I hear that a lot, not just from your experience. I heard it when I was selling as well, and I also hear it when I talk to the construction community. It gets overwhelming to think of all the things you can do. And when you look at technology, you think, okay, this is all the stuff I'm dealing with. Technology has to be able to solve it all. And what you do is you start forgetting about what your struggles are now. And what you start to do is start thinking about all the things that it can do. Absolutely. And then you get lost in the fact that if it can't do the 90, like 99% of it, well, there might be no point in doing it at all, or I still have to just keep looking for that perfect solution. And reality is, you don't, you, you get there, you work your way there. Start by solving those problems. Get, like you said, what is it, what would it be like to be 70% more efficient right now? Yeah. And then work together to get to the next stage. And, and I'm, I'm gonna ask you another question here. You've taught me something. You've taught me something that's called a consultative sales approach. And to me, like coming from construction, I, I, you know, sales for me, I dealt with 10 different companies and we'd have a burger and a beer and it was all relationships. And when I was thinking software, I'm like, oh, it's just a bunch of people cold calling and trying to slam a product down somebody's throat. And you changed my view on that. And maybe talk to me a little bit about that consultative sales approach and, and what does that mean? Like, what, what, is that, what does that mean to you? And why does that matter? Why well, does that matter for our customers to find somebody that has that approach as well? Yeah, I think you wanna find you know, a partner at the end of the day that you feel heard with, that you feel truly understands you and your challenges. And to your point, it's not just trying to, you know, push a product on you, right? That they truly understand that this is, you know, a solution that could help you in your business and your unique challenges. And if it isn't, then maybe they'll recommend something else that could be better suited for you. So I think that's in essence, what, when we talk yeah. about the consultative approach and, and feeling like you've got that partner for the long term, right? It's, it's almost like having, 
you know, as a GC, one of its most trusted subcontractors and, uh, and building that long-term relationship that way. Because at the end of the day, you only have one chance to really, you know, work with someone and make that first impression. And, um, you know, if it's not now, maybe it'll be sometime down in the future. Yeah, that's interesting. I remember the first time you, you, I was on a demo with you and you, you identified that we weren't the right fit and you were like, well, you know what, There's, there might, you might be a better fit for this software or that software and it was some of our competitors. And I remember we got off the phone, I'm like, what happened there? And you're like, no, it's not about now. It's about like building that relationship, that trust, finding the right software for that company, pushing the industry right. into technology because we all win. I've really changed my perspective and I, I thank you for that, that's amazing. So now, the perfect solution doesn't exist. But I've also heard a lot about this all-in-one platform. And now I know, maybe not from the safety officer, but business leaders, trying to yeah. find something that does it all. Business leaders, VP of operations, CEOs, you know, owners. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's that quest, that desire, that idea that you know, there's gotta be a platform that does it all. Whether it's you know, doing your accounting for your construction company, your uh, project management and then just adding in safety into the fold there but you know the reality is a lot of companies find out the hard way by trying to go down that route and you know fit a, a square peg in a round hole and it just doesn't actually work out in the end and as you can see with this image here Gabe uh, you know you wouldn't really you know have a, a subcontractor that's an electrical contractor do your plumbing right right you, specialization in the industry right. exists for a reason and it's all about you know, in my mind, having the right tool for the job and having a purpose-built safety platform. Fo focus matters. Yeah, that's yeah. that's an interesting one. I mean, I remember when it's not just so safety software. I mean, with us when we started Salus, I went from my construction world where I had two software. Are they really software? We're talking email and Dropbox, <laughs> not very yeah. extensive. To now, we have thirty different software we use to run Salus. And I remember when I first talked to Scott Switzer, who is our other co-founder and COO. I was like, we have Salesforce. Salesforce costs us a lot of money. Can't Salesforce just do it all, Scott? I'm like, why do we have to buy all these things? Just Salesforce can do it all. And quickly realizing that, no, no, I mean, at some point it's okay, but you need those specialty tools for the job. Focus matters. And when somebody in our team flipped it around on me and started identifying it with the construction industry, and it really made sense, it's like, I mean, Look at how construction works. We have a hammer that that's all it does. Nobody's ever tried to change the hammer because it does the best job. We have what, seven different saws you can use, right? Each saw is meant for what it does best. And same with trades. I mean, ideally the general contractors out there, the prime contractors, we all know you'd love to have three contracts that you award, but reality is that doesn't, it doesn't work because the specialty trades need to do what they do best. And even then you go from a specialty trade that has a subcontractor as a subcontractor sometimes because they need to specialize from there. And that's the same thing with finding your safety, your, well, your software. Forget safety software. If you're buying a software, buy a software that's focused, that knows what it's doing in its specialty in its world and then make sure that it can communicate and it plays nice with the other software because that's yeah. the same thing as on a job site, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, trades on a job site, they don't operate in a vacuum, right? There's gonna have, they're gonna have overlap with each other as they're doing their special work. The same is true for the software. Like you said, you know, yes, by all means, find that purpose-built solution for the task that's so critical to your business, but make sure and ask those questions of that potential partner for you. Can they integrate? Can they, are they open to connecting to the other mission critical platforms for your business. That's great, that's great. So last slide in this, this conversation, Greg. So we talked a little bit about all of these things, but uh, I mean, around the consultative sales approach, make sure you find your partner, you build that relationship, but maybe talk to us through that buying process. I know you've talked to me a little bit about like I said, the consultative sales approach, but there's things you've mentioned as well about buying a product for what it does now, but also paying attention to what it does in the future. Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously, Gabe, you want to satisfy those challenges that you're experiencing now as a business, right? I mean, you know, vivid in my mind is that picture of, you know, the worker in the field with 
the wet, soggy forms and yes. know, getting reamed out by the owner because he can't protect his business now. So right. I think about, you know, obviously that's a mission critical challenge that needs to be addressed first, right? We talked yeah. about how do we solve the core first? Right. So you've got to have something that obviously takes care of those immediate needs. But at the same time, to your point, you want to always have your eye, you know, looking to the future. And, you know, is this a potential partner that is continually innovating? Are they, you know, again, going back to the consultative approach, listening to our challenges and our feedback on the solution and taking that and actually taking strides with that to help the platform evolve as safety does. Because we know safety is only yeah, it's one moving. way. It's, and it's moving fast. It is. And yeah. it's just changing every day and regulations. And so you want a partner that, again, is open innovation and flexibility, but then also has that support uh, model in place, right? You're not just buying a software, hopefully at the end of the day, you're also investing in a partner that, again, is listening to you, a relationship. Um, and then, you know, you gotta ask the tough questions too, right? What happens if uh, that relationship doesn't pan out in the yeah. future, right? You wanna know those answers to those questions up front as part of your due diligence. So I right. definitely ask or add that question uh, you know, to your assessment. Right, and I think there's two things I'll, I'll call out because I've heard this a lot from whether it, people we've talked to that have left other software or just be speaking to the community again, do not buy a software for what it's gonna do in the future. That, let's be clear on that. That's not what Greg's saying here. Buy it for what it can do now. Yeah. But make sure you dig into the vision of that business. Whatever software you buy, whatever, and there's lots of incredible software out there. In our space, in safety, there's so many incredible companies out there doing incredible things. Make sure your vision aligns. Maybe your vision doesn't quite align with where that company is going in the future. It works now, but you see where they're going and it doesn't quite line up because at the end of the day, you don't want to buy a software that you're going to switch from in a year. You want to buy something that you can grow with because at the end of the day, like we said, reality is the software at best can probably get you 90% of the way there. And what I mean by that is that safety is changing, your business is changing, and you're always gonna need to grow with it. And it needs to be growing with you. And so really dig in and ask those questions. Uh, Greg, thanks. Thanks, Gabe, appreciate it.